Saturday evening to you guys. We're out here on a walking cooler that's not working right. Got here, is taking a peek at it. First thing I notice, we've got sight glass. It's fairly uh, bubbling there. Then we've got the freezer underneath, which it's not calling. Let's take a look back here on the back side. Not the cleanest in the world. It actually would help us when we're low on charge. Let's go inside and see what we've got going on inside. See if it's anything uh, beyond just that. All right, well, I just may have got handed another call while I'm here. So there's the freezer. It looks like it's a temperature. Here's the cooler. Oh, it ain't quite as warm as they said. It was 40. It's 44, which is still too warm. They said supposedly this thing over here is not working right. Yeah, but what's important is what's your product temperature. Can't trust them junk thermometers they got. Well, we'll take a product temp and see what it's at. So we checked the temp on some of the products in here. And the stuff up there is 39, 38. Went ahead and adjusted that thermometer up there, the thermostat up there. No ice on the back, fans are running. Let's see what we got down here. It's got Filter medium looks fairly clean. Let's focus on what we're here for. Mmm, coil is a little dirty. I've seen worse. It can be definitely cleaned off. It's warm, but let's go ahead and get this thing charged up. We can uh, always come back and do a cleaning on this thing. I think our biggest problem with this one's going to be that it's low on charge. We can always come back later, possibly. I'll, I'll, let's see how things go. If it starts dropping a temp and I got, it doesn't take very long, I'll go ahead and get it now. If not, let's just get it recharged. We can look for a leak real quick. While we got it down, we can uh, see if we can find a leak or what's going on. I think this has a tendency to go low and has a really small leak, so they may not want to fix it. Get everything zeroed out. Let's start adding a little juice into this and see where we end up coming in at. Two pounds, still going. There's a happy spot. Just hit it just two pounds. Yeah, one pound, 13 ounces. So let's go ahead and stop for a moment and see what it takes to keep it at that area. Went a little bit over that. Now if we stop there, chances are we'll get us some more bubbles here in just a few minutes or seconds, whatever. It's a little cooler out today. I think it's probably 38, something like that. With that set for a moment, may just add an extra pound or so to it. We went ahead and just went a few more ounces up. We're not, I was gonna take it up to three, but let's take a look at our pressures here. Not that I like to focus on pressures, but it's pretty cold out here. We're running 120 degree discharge, which for as cold as it is, seems a little on the higher side of things. Suction's looking a little high too, which is kind of scary. I hope we don't have a, something else going on here besides just that. Let's do a pump down here, unless I charge it in way too quickly. That's what it's kind of looking like. Let's do a pump down, see if, uh, It'll pump down and find out where our level is on our receiver here. See what our head pressure does. Yeah, I might overcharge it a little bit. Sure is seeming that way. See how your head pressure is going up? Normally it'll go down and it shouldn't be that high, especially as cold as it is out here today. I did notice the wire tie they use, which is pretty generic. It tends to break. Well, anyhow, it, it was broke. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these strapped in with some strap right there. Went ahead and heated it up, but you can kind of see just about right. That area right there is where it was the brightest. It's kind of distributed out across the receiver now, but it's 
it's definitely full but it ain't like all the way to you know we're probably somewhere that close to that 80 percent mark well, i'm looking a little closer you can't see any daylight through that at all so it's a little more dirt a little dirtier than what i thought you don't see no daylight so i pack full of crud this would be a good one for my little blaster today is a day where it's really cold i don't think we have any water out here either which is like so typical of these places they don't have any water outside we'll get this little puppy out and we'll spray it out don't have to worry about lines freezing or anything else so this will work out really nice let's go ahead and wash this thing out that head pressure is definitely high get my little battery pack here and just power it off of that make it nice and easy grab our little sprayer stuff which they sent me a new sprayer i had uh, gotten a little aggressive with it and uh, tried bending a 90 on it and that didn't work out real good. See it all comes apart so they sent me a whole new spray nozzle so I'm gonna modify this back to straight and probably do the cut on that one. Got her all primed up good to go. More than adequate to get this thing clean. I think what you're gonna see is that uh, that thing was packed full of crud. I didn't figure I overfilled it that fast. Holy crap. Yeah, this hasn't been cleaned for quite a while. Gets forgotten, man. Gets forgotten. And all this is going to contribute to longer run time before you notice that it's low on charge. Because it's basically building artificial head pressure. All right, let's see if you can see through it now. Oh, look at that. You can actually see through it. That head pressure should be a lot better than what it was before. Yeah, and you can also spray off this other unit underneath here that's got crud all over it. You can just shoot it right out of there. Not bad. This is a hell of a little sprayer, I'll tell you that. I'm really surprised. Now, I gotta admit, I am very leery about doing this because they aren't having problems with it. But if it's low, it's going to show up now that I've cleaned it. But it looks so bad that I just can't let it go. And if I did overcharge the top, which, which one I which I don't think I did. Like I said, this thing was completely plugged full of crud. So you can always dump the remaining overcharge into this unit if it is low. And you can adjust that spray pattern on the end there. But as you see, we're not damaging those aluminum fins. It's uh, doing a really nice job air on it. Now look at that. We did both coils and we still have some water left there. Which is kind of nice. Couldn't finish spraying that thing off. But you can literally see through the coil now. Look at that. You couldn't see that before at all. Since I had to get this out anyhow, I might as well go down here and wash out the uh, evaporator too. Maybe we'll lay that all the way over there. Run this all the way over to here. I really should scrape this off probably ahead of time, um, but to be honest with you, I uh, don't have my brush in here. I think I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can get that crud off there like that. We're going to make sure we rinse that drain out really good though, because I have a feeling it's going to put the drain up otherwise. She looks a whole lot better than what it did. I uh, got a couple spots up there now that I got better light in here. But still, that's a lot better than what it was. I ain't gonna spend all day making it perfect. I'm sorry, it's on the call. This stuff should be done during normal business hours. You can see all the crud coming out of the drain. So we're definitely getting it out of there. Let's go over here and get to this freezer and make this thing run. What I usually do is just kind of hold on to it. That way I don't screw with their settings or nothing. Kind of just put my hand on it and then uh, I think I just heard it kick on we'll go out and we'll see how that sight glass looks we've got to give it a squirt we'll give it a squirt it's able to get everything kind of right back in the bucket there no problem everything like I said that's a nice small little package everything you need technically right there I'm really impressed I honestly did not expect it to be as good as what it is I'm it just makes it so much simpler than, than what I was originally using. Now, some of you guys might be thinking I'm just trying to sell you crap. I'm only going to push products that I'll use that I find to be worthwhile. Because I know we work hard for our money and we don't want to buy anything that's not. I'm not going to uh, push something that, uh, that I don't think is worthwhile. 
it's starting to get dark already. Let's take a look here. I don't see any bubbles in there on it. That must be fine. You can see through that coil a lot easier than what you could earlier. And this one here, it's pretty, pretty packed full of crap. You can't, you can't see anything past all the compressors and stuff. Let's go ahead and get this thing back up and running. See how it does now. If you're wanting to know, this is a little dinky 5 amp battery on this one. It didn't even run it down. It looks a little better. First is 318, 320 I think it was. It's got a little water on it yet, but we're solid. I think we're still solid on this one down here. Yeah, we're pretty good on that. Yeah, I can see through that coil now back here. Got to get just the right glare on it. Let's just say two and a half pounds low. Let's do a, a shot at it with the uh, leak detector. I think this thing uh, has a very, very small leak. I think it's had a tendency to be a little low every so often. We can go down there and see what we got. But yeah, I feel a lot better. Our head pressure still staying down there. More reasonable level. 180, I believe, is what that head master head pressure control valve is actually at which is hidden back here in the back corner let's uh pump it down one more time go down and scan it for leaks we got it uh 13 pounds on the suction let's turn that off let's just dump a little bit of liquid back into that suction and raise that up a touch and then uh, that way we don't have a full load of liquid in there there we go, at least there's 60 some pounds. That should be a good start, 65. Stand outside on the condenser and, oh, what is going on here? Ah. Atlantis, I think we got us a little leak on the head there. Well, anything? Well, looky here though. That looks all, yeah. See that right there? That's shiny. Shiny as oil. Yes, sir. You're leaking in the coil. Multiple spots, it looks like. For 28. I'm just going to spray it down with some soap. I honestly, it won't be long. I'll probably get more calls. I don't want to spend all day here. Uh, you can see, though, that oil is on that suction line there for sure. The fan could have grabbed some of it and blown it all over up here. Let's spray it down real quick and then we can wrap this up. It's obvious that it was low on charge is our main issue here. Yep, there's one. That could be fixed pretty easily. But if you got one there, you're gonna have more than others. There's a lot of produce in here. It tends just to eat that crap up. Not really seeing anything on it. I didn't scan the rest of the coil and you can see the coil's getting ate up. See that right there? That's, they're just getting to the point where the coil needs replaced. Door closer needs replaced too even if you can get it to stay down low like it should. It needs new door seals too. But it goes to there and it won't even close itself in. Even, even if you pull that in, it's still not wanting to close. There you go, you can see it there. It's snowing. We're in freaking November yet. We're pretty much holding right in that one, uh, 178 area. Still nice and good on the uh, side glass there plugged up and uh, you know building artificial head pressure we're looking good we're gonna go down and verify it's getting cooler which there's no reason why it wouldn't if you ain't feeding solid liquid to that TXV you're gonna have issues pretty pretty common science here all right so I called them let them know what was going on so they're gonna take care of the door steel and the door closer the uh, coil I recommended it has several leaks in different spots you know I could fix it where it was at no problem but I have a feeling it's probably leaking in the coil too and we only had uh, 50 pounds somewhere in that ballpark of refrigerant pressure on it with it pumping down every time it shuts off while it's running it's at you know 25 35 whatever pounds of pressure it's not going to leak out super fast but it don't make it right they've got several different stores so they're going to just keep an eye on it for right now that's what was wrong with it uh, back to any product that i show you guys i feel like i'm doing you guys a service as far as i'm testing it making sure it's something i personally own 
So you're gonna see a few different products I'm going to talk about. I got a Phoenix flashlight. It's just absolutely the brightest flashlight that I've ever owned by them. I'm a big Phoenix flashlight guy. I'm gonna show that off. You know, I know we go out on night service calls. We gotta find addresses. We gotta get up on roofs. We gotta find different things like that while we're out and about. And uh, I know flashlights are pretty important to us. Some of us are real geeks on flashlights. Um, that power sprayer thing. I mean, yeah, there's other ones out there that uh, have more features as far as batteries and and uh, build in water, but you know, they're 600 plus dollars. There's some cheapy ones, but you read the reviews on them and a lot of people are complaining about them saying they're not that great. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Till next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.